Okay, we're going to start off by going over the covalent bonding worksheet, uh, going over the, the questions and the answers. What I have on there, the first question was, what is covalent bonding? You notice how mine is all nice and blank? Because I'm lazy. Here's what the answer is, though. When you look at what is covalent bonding, you go back to this second paragraph right there, first sentence. It says, bonding in which electrons are shared rather than transferred is called covalent bonding. That's what you need to have written in. But has that one? Yes, sir. Okay. Next question is, what is an electron dot diagram? Go back over here. What you need to have written down is this, uh, the second and third sentence. In an electron dot diagram, the chemical symbol for the element represents the nucleus and all the inner energy levels of an atom. The dots represent valence <coughs> electrons. Third question is, what is a molecule? That will be on this page. Number three, the combination of atoms by a covalent bond is called a molecule. And then, what does the chemical formula of a molecule tell you? Look over here again. First sentence of this paragraph says, the chemical formula for covalently bonded compound or molecule shows the exact number of, of elements involved in the bond. As in H2, uh, H2O, how many H's are there? Two. Two, yeah. How many O's are there? One. One. That's all there is to it. Okay. Uh, next thing was to complete the electron dot diagrams below. If y'all recall, I said look on the periodic table, find them. Using this right here and using this pattern of one, two, skip, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how many dots you're going to need for your dot diagram. So, go to those right there. N. N is in the fifth column. So it's going to have five dots. So o is in the sixth column. Six dots. F, seventh column. Neon. Sulfur. That's too far down. Sulfur. <coughs> and phosphorus. All right, does everybody have those? Yes, sir. All right. Now, the whole purpose for doing those dot diagrams like that is to see how the, the uh, atoms fit together to form molecules. And that's how we do these right here. For example, carbon is in that fourth column right here. And hydrogen is in the first column, right? So whenever I draw those, like this right here. Carbon's got the four dots, basically one for each H. And each H makes a dot next to the carbon. Did everybody see how that part worked out? Now, on number 12, this is one that I had a mistake last week when we were doing this first time because I forgot a possibility, which was you can have what's called a double bond. I mean, it's got two pairs of bonds. Now, the, the thing to remember when you look at these, they need to have as many valence electrons as possible, right? The most you can have is uh, at, at these energy levels is eight. For hydrogen, the most you can have is two. So how many dots has this hydrogen got beside it? Two. So each of these have two beside it, right? These guys down here, need eight to fill in their shells. How many does oxygen have beside it? It's got eight. two, four, six, eight, right? Eight. So it's got eight, carbon has eight, and this oxygen has eight. Everybody with me on that part? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Chlorine. I can come back.
combine two of the same thing there to make chlorine. And then I got SiO2, which basically works out the same way as number 12. Does everybody got all that? Mm -hmm. Ionic bonding. First question, what is ionic bonding, right? If you go up here, the second sentence says bonding, oh sorry, third sentence. It says bonding that uh, involves the transfer of electron is called ionic bonding. Transfer of electrons needs to be in your answer. How does an atom become a negative ion? Number two starts right here. If an atom gains, an ele uh, gains electrons, it becomes, uh, sorry, loses an electron, becomes positively charged. Gains an electron, becomes negatively charged. That becomes an ion. What is ionization energy? Right here, the energy required to remove the electron is called ionization energy. Number four, what is electron affinity? The tendency of an atom to gain electrons is called electron affinity. Everybody have all those marks? Yes? Okay. All right. Number five, what is a crystal lattice? When I, uh, ionic compounds are formed, the atoms always arrange themselves in regular repeating arrangement called a crystal lattice. Number seven. No, no, let's get number six for you. Okay, we'll come back to number six. What is the significance of the chemical formula for an ionic compound? Just like the other one. Formula tells you the ratio between the atoms, like the H2O and all that kind of stuff. All right. Now the reason why I skipped number six is how does an atom become a positive ion? And that's back here where number two was. The sentence before it is number six. It says it becomes positively charged by losing an electron. Okay. Number six on the first page. Second paragraph and third sentence. Okay. And then uh, the one about giving giving uh, two examples of opposites attracting. Really, I was looking for anything. Um, you could have said magnets. You could have said like a really nice guy and a really not nice girl, or vice versa. Okay. Uh, last worksheet is metallic bonding. First question was, what is a metallic bond? If you're looking at second paragraph, second sentence says, uh, in a metallic bond, the outer electrons form a common electron cloud. That's all you need. Next question was, what is malleability? Malleability. That means that metals are malleable. Number, number two is right here. Uh, which means that you can hammer those into thin sheets without breaking. Ductility, number three, is right here, which means that they can be drawn into thin wire. And then number four is these last two sentences. How does the metallic bonding account for properties of metals? Uh, number four, the ability of electrons to flow freely makes good conductors of both heat and electricity. It also accounts for the high melting points of most metals. Okay, does anybody have any questions on those worksheets? No. Okay. no.